Oh my gosh. So I just wanted to post a video to the Twitter. I refuse to call it X. Sorry, Elon. Um, and, and here is this post from good old Kelsey. Hashicore joins IBM. Hashicore is one of my favorite companies of all time. Uh, Red Hat was kind of a good thing. And Scott here makes the conclusion that Ansible and Terraform will now be under the IBM banner. Uh, full disclosure, I worked for IBM for more than 10 years. Um, and IBM is where companies go to die. I have seen it over and over and over again. Um, companies go there and and then IBM strips the company of, of anything that has value. They lock down the people uh that they need to keep around this happened with big fix for example and then they got rid of it and then the people who actually did the innovation they leave and i don't know how many times i've read an announcement while i was at ibm that all of the really key people in an acquisition left to pursue other interests as soon as their contractual obligation to stay there uh left uh, i guarantee you i promise you so help me god that the good people at HashiCorp will be gone as soon as their contract lets them leave. They will not stay. Um, and because of the culture at IBM, the culture at IBM is uh, let's work there as long as we can uh, and let's get our, you know, I can't leave because I don't have any skills and I am now stuck here as opposed to keeping your skills up and then bouncing around. I, I, I know this from firsthand experience, lots of stories I could tell about that. Um, IBM is, is, you know, they've done a lot of really great things, uh, and it, you can't just say paint IBM with one brush, but if you were going to paint IBM with one brush, it's the place people, companies go to die. The only reason IBM is even still alive today, it's gone through, I mean, it lost, it literally had over a trillion dollars in losses, uh, during some of the harder times and it survived. And the reason is because most high-end conservative organizations and militaries and governments depend on IBM because it's been around since the dawn of time. So they can't get rid of it. They literally can't get rid of it. They're like totally, you know, and then when they bought Red Hat, it was really controversial. And then they made Red Hat the, pres the guy or the president, and then he got demoted as the president and got changed out. And, I mean, he wasn't demoted. I think he actually didn't want to be the president anymore. <laughs> I mean, he's probably a great person. I don't know. I don't know any of these people, but I do know that um, HashiCorp is one of my favorite companies. They've done a lot of um, innovation. Um, th this is really, really, really scary because, you know, now that they have Ansible under the, I mean, Ansible, enterprises are pushing Ansible and Terraform really heavily. And now that they're, they're going to gatekeep all of that, just like they did with Red Hat. So this could be very bad. Um, uh, this could be very bad. Um, I, I don't see any way this could be good, honestly, uh, except for maybe giving the HashiCorp people some place to work because they couldn't afford, they didn't survive the, the bubble, which is probably the reason HashiCorp got picked up. I have no idea what is going on over there. I don't have any insight into it. I don't know anybody at HashiCorp. Hashicore is one of the very short list of companies that I would have left to go work for. Uh, but like any company trying to push um, their own cool stuff, uh, you know, now there's a lot of them that are dying because they can't afford it. They didn't, they, they didn't survive uh, the crash of crypto, they didn't dis which indirectly hit a bunch of tech companies that had invested some of their capital in crypto. Why the hell would you do that? Um, and it's affected so many companies in that particular area indirectly. Um, and so we saw that, you know, we saw that bubble come crashing, uh, down the last couple of years. And so to see HashiCorp, I think this, I don't know, I don't know, but my guess, my guess is that the HashiCorp, uh, is being picked up by Red Hat, by IBM because they are vulnerable just like GitHub was picked up by Microsoft when they were really vulnerable. GitHub was hemorrhaging money. They were about to go bankrupt and Microsoft saved GitHub. You can say whatever you want about Microsoft, but Microsoft swept in and kept GitHub alive. It was financially going to die and they kept it alive. Um, 
And so, I don't know, maybe that's a positive way to look at it, the HashiCorp thing. Maybe IBM has, I mean, if one thing IBM has got, it's like unlimited capital. I don't even know where they get their money from. It's insane. But um, but they they probably are going to uh, to push uh, for HashiCorp to survive. Um, maybe, maybe IBM has learned not to mess with companies. Um, Red Hat is actually doing very well as a company, as far as I can tell. Um, uh, it's still the go-to distribution for most enterprises. Um, a lot of people watching this are not going to understand that statement. Let me, let me just explain that. So, um, enterprises and that includes, you know, nonprofits and stuff. They have much different considerations than the standard Linux, you know, internet user. They don't care about, honestly, open source and things like that unless it affects their bottom line. They have a fiduciary responsibility, um, to quote a, a, a fallout recently, um, to produce value, and they don't care. So they love producing value um, and they love relationships with other big organizations because those organizations are less likely to fail. This is, they used to say, you know, nobody gets fired for buying IBM. They don't say that anymore, but they used to say that. And, you know, when, when you're going to pick a Linux distribution, this is why, I mean, just to give you a sense of this, to, to, to hear somebody say, oh, I would never use Red Hat. Arch is the best Linux distribution you pretty much just pegged yourself as somebody who has no experience whatsoever in the actual working world. I don't make the rules. Somebody decided that, that this is the way it is. And I'm telling you how it is. Don't shoot the messenger. Learning arch is a huge mistake. If you want to get a job in enterprise Linux, unless you already know red hat, in which case you want to understand the deeper intro workings of, of, of Linux and, and that's why not even Nix. you're not going to see eventually you're going to see these things oh, i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry unless you want to work for valve right and you want to work on on um stream uh, steam deck there are a few places where arch is a thing but i have to say this to people because they're like why is why is why is i been buying red hat? oh red has that boring enterprise destroy you know what enterprises like boring Boring is sustainable. Boring is common. Boring is easier to hire people for because there's more people who know it. This is why people buy so much Microsoft. People are like, why the hell would you put Microsoft in your enterprise? Microsoft is the devil. Their, their software is crap. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm repeating what people, what people say. I don't necessarily fully agree with that. In some cases, I do. Why do they always buy that? Why, did, why do so many people buy, buy you know, Lotus and, and uh, you know, and all this Lotus Notes and all this stuff, the horrible, horrible, horrible software from IBM. Why do they continue to buy it? Because there was some deal made on a golf course. They shook a hand and said, were well, you going to be there when everything goes away? Yeah, but what about our users? Do you, do you think our users are going to like the software? Have you pulled the users to see if they like this software versus this other software? No. They don't care. They don't care. They, they're about making money and doing the corporate bottom line. And this goes for everybody. My, you, you, should hear, you should hear my wife complain about Microsoft Office. <laughs> It's absolutely hilarious. And I'm like, well, and it's like, there's nothing else. Okay, what does this have to do with Ansible and Terraform and HashiCorp? It's the same thing, right? So Red Hat has become the mainstream, uh, you know, and, and I actually, that's when I sold all my Red Hat stock. When Red Hat, when, when Red Hat went proprietary and started gatekeeping and then still created Fedora so they could siphon for free all of the open source innovation into their product that then they were going to turn around and sell for 20 times its value to enterprises who have tons and tons of money because they're inflated because of stock capital inflation. And then, and then they were, they just, you know, kept making money hand over fist. If I wanted to make a lot of cash, I would have held on to that stock. Hell yeah. I probably... I'd be doing very well. I'd be doing much better than now. <laughs> I'm not doing bad, but I have a soul. I'm just going to put that out there. So Terraform, this might be actually a really good thing for, um, this might be a really good thing, but it also might be a very horrible thing. Um, I suspect this means IBM's going to come up with a new offering that um, has Ansible and Terraform integrated. You would never have seen those kinds of things uh before the acquisition 
I don't have faith in IBM to pull that off. Um, I've seen IBM try to innovate on its own, and there are a few cases where it really did well. Um, but when it comes to, this is what, I, I mean, we used to have a jokes in IBM, but, but oh, here we go again. IBM is the Borg. IBM is the Borg. They like, we will assimilate you. They assimilate them. They take out their, your unique elements will become part of our own. They become a little bit of their own and then they kill off the rest of the thing. I cannot tell you how many times good people have been purchased by IBM and then immediately left because they escaped the Borg hive collective. And I am concerned. I'm concerned. I'm concerned that, that we're going to learn. No, Ansible, Ansible's from, Ansible was on its own and then it became a Red Hat thing. And now it's still a Red Hat thing. And Terraform is under HashiCorp. So basically, I did say Lotus. Yeah. Uh, too late. <laughs> Willfulness is like, I don't agree. I don't agree that this is going to happen. And that's fine. A lot of people disagree. IBM right now is trying to revive its stock. I didn't hear no bail. Um, looking forward to hearing what IBM has planned with them. Wow. Yeah. Uh, uh, what people are going to learn, acquisitions are never, ever, ever good for the people who are trying to build an original companies or for the customer. This, this is 100% based on IBM trying to cater to its major customer base, which is big ass enterprises and governments that is their primary their primary customer um god you can make a case that this is just another just another thing another part another indicator of late stage capitalism and consolidation of the wealth at the top and screw you we got ours uh towards all the people at the bottom um you know and i i made a video recently about how to survive late stage capitalism you know become a blacksmith um and i mean it uh, this seems to be the trend now. Regulators have to have to have a say first. Now regulators aren't going to do anything. They're not. They're not. There's nothing sacred. Sigh. Congratulations. T minus two before Terraform rug pull happens. Yep. Um, there are a lot of people. That's actually a really good comment there. Um, there's going to be a lot of enterprises that are going to stop using Terraform. Um, there are many, many uh, organizations that just will not, um, they won't, they won't, they won't do IBM at all. And others are like, Oh, hell yes. We get IBM to support us. Uh, it's time to find the CNCF equivalent at this point. Rip. Um, this, this is a direct reference to, uh, another company. What was the other company's name recently that went the, Oh, Redis, Reddit, no Redis. The Redis database said, oh, we're proprietary now. And then immediately the open source community jumped on it and said, we got to make an open version now. And that's what they're going to do for Terraform. Ansible, I don't, Ansible is an interesting one. Uh, IBM will ruin tech as they do the Red Hat. Yeah, absolutely. They ruin everything. I, they, IBM has no ability to govern innovation. I'm sorry, they don't. I was there for 10 years. I had, I, there's a lot of amazing engineers that I worked with at Red Hat, at IBM, but their inability to actually understand innovation and, and know how to generate innovation within the company is just really evident through objective historical analysis. They buy innovation. They attempt to buy it and then it dies on the vine because they have no idea how to keep it alive because it's this big ass corporation with lots of bureaucracy and lots of inter drama between distinguished engineers who have no clue what they're talking about. I went to work at IBM after leaving Nike.com because I thought that it was the one company that had a title called distinguished engineer and it was going to be able to go vertically up. Uh, even though, and so it was going to be the end of my ceiling, my salary ceiling based on, in, by, based on tech. At some, at some point, there's another video I should do on this. At some point in the tech, if you're going to do a tech career, if you want your salary to increase, you have to cut over to management. And if you don't cut over to management, you will be eternally capped. And there are only a few companies at, that I've ever heard of that have allowed a technical path to their engineers so that they can exceed the expectations of they can they can keep their income equivalent with a vice president or an executive at some level there are very very few companies that get this and most companies actually uh, the only company there's lots of oxide has got some interesting thing oxide everybody makes the same salary which is 
kind of weird, but you know, that does ensure that the president is making the same as an engineer. And I actually went to IBM number one because they doubled my salary, doubled it. I talked to the recruiter and I said, um, you know, I don't want to talk to you unless you can do blood. He goes, yes. Can you be here in Dallas on Friday? I flew in, I interviewed, I got the job and I made double my salary. And I've talked about that in other videos, but um, so, so, and then I also went there because of this title, distinguished engineer title, because this idea is that, oh, hey, this, this is a, this is an executive level pay job. That's also an engineer job. Turns out it's a total crock of shit because in order to even get the distinguished engineer, you have to have several patents under your belt. And if you don't know this about IBM, this is one of the reasons IBM is going to die eventually. IBM still puts a high degree of credence in patents. They regularly brag about being the number one company with the most patents issued per year. And there is a very intense internal cultural expectation for you to produce a patent regularly. And if you are not producing a patent regularly, and sometimes the patents are so stupid. There was this guy that I was sort of working with kind of, he was like indirectly related and everybody was like, Oh, he's so cool. And, and then I saw his patents that he got and I, and he, you know, he's probably making twice as much as I was. He wasn't a distinguished engineer yet. And I looked at his patents and I was like, you got a patent for this? What the hell? And IBM's got this like ton, this team of patent lawyers that will help their engineers take some stupid idea and they will, they will, they will patent it. They'll patent. They don't even know if it's, but they got the, 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 the lawyers to push through the patents. I'm telling you, it's a shit show over there. They will push through the patents and you cannot become a distinguished engineer unless you are putting out patents. Guess who doesn't like to put out patents? Everybody who works at Red Hat. <laughs> what do you think their future in the, in the corporation is? Zero. And when I learned that the distinguished, in fact, I met a distinguished engineer in Toronto. I got to be careful here. I met a distinguished engineer in Toronto and she started grooming me to be her pocket engineer because she had no clue what she was doing. And I mean it. She had no freaking clue what she was doing. She didn't know basic things. And I was like, how the hell is this person a distinguished engineer? I'll tell you how. She's a distinguished engineer because of the politics and the schmoozing and the, you know, she did her minimum patents to, to meet the base. You can't even be a distinguished engineer unless you get voted in by the cool kids. So all the other distinguished engineers, many of whom have no idea what they're doing, they get together and they vote you into their little in club. And now you're making tons more money and you're a distinguished engineer and you get to go around and talk about it. There's another one. There's another guy. I almost want to say his name. He's on YouTube. He's actually in a YouTube video. He's in a YouTube video. And I worked with this dude for five years. I worked for this dude for five years. And he is a zero, technically. He's a zero. I mean, more than a zero. He was constantly parroting everybody else's ideas. He was constantly calling us and, and having these little meetings. And everybody sort of eventually figured out that this guy was just he was just taking our ideas and then he was going to management and he was repackaging them in a nice happy package. It became a thing on our team. Our team was like, we would talk about him behind his back because he was such a grifting asshole. And he became a, of course, a distinguished engineer. And now he and his family are spotlighted in this YouTube thing. They got this beautiful YouTube thing and it, it pans, it, it zooms in on his certificate on the wall, distinguished engineer with a big ass gold logo, you know, gold stamp, the bottom i'll tell you right now that guy doesn't know shit he, he knows almost nothing i'll tell you what he really knows how to do he knows how to take other people's ideas and resell them for his own but guess guess what you know why he gets valued so much and distinguished engineers vote him in because that's what ibm values ibm values by taking somebody else's innovation bringing it into there and then saying see what we did and then they'll rebrand it They'll rebrand it. They'll, they'll put a Tivoli on the front of it or some shit. All right, I'm getting spun up. I'm getting spun up about this because I this was very personal to me. And I kept getting advice from people who were distinguished engineers within the company saying, you need to put a patent out there. You need to do this and that. And I'm like, hell no, I'm not doing that. And I kept refusing to play by their, you know, inner. I just I wanted to be an authentic engineer. And I didn't want to do that. 
Uh, it's not because of copy. It's not because of copy. It's because of IBM. Um, antitrust is not a thing in America anymore. You don't know who it is. Yeah. Uh, I'm talking. There's there's one particular person with that I worked with at IBM who became the 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 project leader and all this other stuff and. He has no clue. And I dude, that's not just coming from me. That's coming from everybody on my team. And meanwhile, we were, you know, I, I, I wrote the communication protocol for fifty two thousand machines that was running that was doing auditing on all these machines. They made millions of dollars off of my software. <laughs> when I left, my manager cried, literally. <laughs> she was awesome though, by the way. She was so awesome. Um that explains the reason behind Terraform fiasco. HashCore with a free and open source Terraform license. HashCore with more restrictive Terraform license. Um, yeah. They changed the Terraform licensing because IBM was it wasn't going to buy them. That, this is so true. This is so true. When a company is hurting, they'll like sacrifice their principles because they want to make money, and I'm no different. You know what? I've done things. I've written clickbait titles on my YouTube <laughs> Uh, because I want I want more barbecue. Yeah, I want to be able to eat more barbecue when I go on my IRL stream. So I'm willing to sacrifice my principles regarding titles in order to get a few more hits, that, if it'll pay for that sweet, sweet, tangy barbecue sauce. <laughs> but the reason that I am poor, you know what? I don't want to even go here. There's going to be at least one commenter who's going to say, it's just skills issue. You have a skills issue. Stop, stop complaining, Mister. You know, sour grapes. I know what I know. In terms of what they, uh, so you know, who else agrees with me? Dennis, go ask Glass Miles what he thinks of this. <laughs> there will be exactly three hundred percent more f words in the in the commentary. Bye, uh, so let me talk talk garet at pray pray graishik i be on bar barbecue может быть я не знаю i be on это же это же шутка как могла такая богатая компания pray grat microsoft how could such a rich company win out over microsoft это же пример величайшего by by Grisha. Yeah, it's a this is an example. That's an interesting question. Yeah, how how is IBM continuing to win out over Microsoft? Or how did they before? I'll tell you how. Go watch, go watch. Uh, what is it? Um, there's a documentary out there you can watch for free on YouTube now. Um, uh, Revenge of the Nerds. I think that is. It talks about it talks about how how. Microsoft won out over IBM. IBM was just a cascade of failures. They IBM literally handed the handed uh, Microsoft OS that that over to um, IBM. Actually paid them and then gave. It's just it, dude. Just just watch any of the historical stuff about IBM's interactions with Microsoft, and you'll see how IBM has no idea what they're doing. They don't. They they just don't. And th there's no political will within the company. Everybody just wants to finish their job and go out and play golf. It it's so bad. Even even the people. I mean, a lot of the people that I worked with. It's like it's like, hey, it's good enough for government work. You know that big company thing has kind of infected the company. And there are uh, bottom line. My my personal experience with IBM is that most of the people who are at IBM were comfortable and they like it that way. Um, most. And the people who were truly hungry for innovation and making a difference were never satisfied by IBM. And sometimes big and boring is a good thing. Sometimes big and boring is horrible. So if you want to move, I, by the way, I work for a big boring company right now. And I got to tell you, I find it so pleasant. I'm not going to say who, but I find it so pleasant that the team that I am on is actually seriously dedicated to innovation. And I had the very, very, very good fortune when I was at IBM to be headhunted inside of the company into that same sort of thing for global services. 
there was a very forward thinking uh, manager within global services who said we want to innovate uh, our delivery of server auditing uh, and we are going to allow the use of open source, which was extremely forward thinking in 2000. Um, and, and I got pulled into that team uh, by it was 2003, actually. Um, I got pulled into that team. And so we were in this tiny little sort of organic center of excellence that didn't have the title. Uh, and we were able to do things and, and we, we, we delivered Postgres back when it was just first coming out and I have a lot of good memories of that because we were, we were given, you know, we were given the flexibility to do what we wanted to do. And it was really amazing. And it was this, but I can tell you that that, that innovation was eventually squelched because as soon as we started really making a difference, the salespeople started selling our product uh, as a as a reason to get global services and the customer started asking but you have this other offering over here this other tibli offering that isn't that the same thing and that created some internal drama that killed the project it killed it it killed the innovation project and so the project that then we then started officially selling and i'm not kidding i had, we had salespeople that were unofficially using our internal software and keeping the accounts because they wanted to keep the accounts and they were using our software, um, uh, global server administrator to do, to, to implement this stuff. And they were like, they kept pushing out the deadline for when they were going to flip the switch on this stuff that we had made because, because this other product was so expensive and clunky and bloated. And what did the company do? see, I was part of this. This is how I know that this is how, this is how IBM operates. They, they changed my title, almost doubled my salary again. I think it, no, that's not true. It was, it was, it was, uh, it was a lot though. And they, I went from being a, an advisory IT person to a software engineer officially within the company. And I worked for the same team. Nothing, ch actually, that's not true. I, I, my manager changed, but a lot of the, they brought over the same people because they squelched this conflict within the company by taking the innovation, basically consuming our innovation by another big ass Borg organization, Tivoli Software. And so I got thrown into the, that's how I met the, the, that's how I met the distinguished engineers who had no clue what they were doing because I was, I had to go to Toronto and I had to meet all the new people in the software division. And I was like, damn, they got a whole software division here. It was kind of cool. The software stuff I've been doing software development, even though I wasn't being paid as a software developer. Now all of a sudden I was, and, and we were working in this, in this organization and we had all of these other things we had to go through and they had, well, that's not a good idea. And we had these, we had these architectural debates with these, these, these people who had no idea what open source even was. And, you know, they wanted to like move us to DB2 and try to sell a DB2 contract to these people instead of keeping them on Postgres. I'm like, you don't get it. You don't get it. They're not going to pay for that. And we had these bites after bites after fight. And eventually the other guy that I worked with left and I, I stayed there because I had a family. I had to keep crunching away the things. And eventually I got relegated off after all of this innovation on this team, this, this new group was so tired of me saying all these other things that I eventually got assigned to, because I was good with, with finding bugs and stuff. I got assigned to, to find the, the, the bugs, the, 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 uh, memory leaks that were, which was in horrible C software that was written. I was third level support for this product product from Tibli that had one job. It was an agent. It was a tattletale agent that ran on every server anywhere in their customer base in order to check whether or not they were paying enough for their Tibli softwares based on how many CPUs were there. And this software was crashing people's machines and I was assigned to do third level support for that piece of crap. So I went from writing, you know, the, 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 the audit compliance software and the entire database model for Postgres, including learning Postgres for all of these machines and all of our, our fortune 500 company, I went from flying high doing this amazing thing to being relegated to chasing somebody else's shitty memory leak in a C code that sucked. And I left obviously. <laughs> so my story is indicative of what IBM does to innovation, whether it's in the company or it's outside of the company. And it's, it, they do it at, a, at an individual level and they do it at a macro level. And this is going to be terrible for HashiCorp, unfortunately. It means that that's not, it's going to die. Um, uh, and, 
dude, people, I, I can tell you, I'm not the only one. I'm just telling you my IBM story. There are so many people who have this story. And the thing that sucks about this is that when this, I remember having a conversation with a distinguished engineer who was a software developer after, while I was in Tivoli before I decided to leave. And, and, and he kept, he, he was trying to mentor me and he, and this guy, this guy, again, he was having me write the code and he was like, well, do this and this. And he was having me write code that then he would take credit for when he did it, when we did the thing, but then he would also act like my mentor. And it was like, dude, the, the level, the, the level of posturing and shit inside of IBM uh, is so bad. I cannot recommend it to anybody. There's, you know, I have, I have good memories of working with several specific engineers, but on the whole, the people who are, who stay at IBM tend to be people that I would never, ever want to work with again, because, because they, they know how to work the system and get the pay without having any merit to it. And, and they do not operate on meritocracy at all. It's all about who you know and how, how you got the promotion and blah, blah, blah. And, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm getting really triggered right now because I'm talking about very personal experiences. Um, and that was, by the way, when I left, that's when I started Skillstack because I was like, I want to... The, the, guy, the guy who came to... I, they had to send an IBMer out to my house uh, to, to close me down or whatever. They had to send an IBMer out to take my laptop and to sign off on me. And the guy sat down and he saw a skill stack that I had created. And I told him, I said, you know, well, you know, I just wanted to do something besides what I was doing. They had me doing, you know, third level support. And, and I mean, I writing the fork bomb, they had me write a fork bomb on purpose to test the resiliency of their software. That was actually the most entertaining project I did at the end of the, at the end of it in C. Um, and, and, it, <laughs> and uh, yeah, but anyway, so, so they had this guy come in and interview me. It's kind of an exit interview. And he saw what I had done and he was like, damn, this is so cool. He was like, this is the coolest thing ever. And he sort of, this is the guy who's supposed to be doing the IBM exit interview. Right. And, and he's like, he's like, I would totally leave IBM if I could do something like this. I'm like, you think, you know, and he was, just, it was kind of funny because he was officially representing IBM and all he could do was like geek out on how cool skill stack was that I made for these, you know, mostly for kids and stuff. And he's like, I had the TVs up and, you know, we were teaching Linux and everything. And, and he, his main job was he had to come take possession of the laptop that, that I was working remotely with. Um, and, you know, at IBM, I was able to, 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 you know, work remotely. That was something I really liked. I did like being able to, um, have, uh, you know, uh, Linux on my laptop. I was able to use Linux on my laptop my entire time at IBM, uh, including when I did it kind of in a pirate fashion, but the pirates at IBM eventually influenced the company to create a standard image for laptops that ran, uh, Red Hat. And, and I was able to run, uh, you know, Red Hat on or Linux on my laptop for, for almost the entire time I was there, which I got to give them credit for that. That was pretty forward thinking. Um, many companies still don't allow that. So um, this is a long video. I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, wrap it up. I just want to read these, the rest of some of these. IBM could do the funniest, the funniest thing right now by removing the BSL license and making it AGPL or similar. Yeah, so Terraform changed their license. Uh, I didn't read a lot about that, but that's as soon as they changed their license, so many people stopped using Terraform. A lot of people stopped. Um, worst downturn quickly, tough landing. Glad they were able to find a way to exit. Should be a win for open source side of things. <laughs> uh, anyone thinking what I'm thinking? What are you thinking? One month after joining IBM, no bad Terraform and console code bases will now be archived and marked as legacy. That's what they they've done. They've done that with so many other things. Uh, now I see why they for they forked open tofu where software goes to die. I said that they better not abandon console C console is so cool. IBM, please make sure from FOSS again, not happening and time to move over to open source fork before the trademark IBM rug pull. Uh, this is IBM. This is what something IBM is really good at doing. IBM has a massive legal department and they also will trademark stuff. So they'll come after people, uh, even if they, um, have, open you know forked an open source project they'll find other ways including patents which are not covered this is why by the way this is why the apache license is so important 
Okay, I should make a separate video about this. But the reason that the Apache license is the only license any big organization or corporation with a decent legal team will accept at all is because it explicitly grants patent rights. And I believe some of the, the BSD variants now do it. Um, but MIT does not do that. The MIT license does not do that. And so that is not good enough for a company that has a legal team. And the reason is because they know IBM exists. IBM prides itself on tearing down people who violate their patents. And they have a very big legal lobby to get patents about anything. So, And they regularly come after companies, small and big, for licensing rights because of patents. So it, your open source license is not going to protect you. Your MIT license is not going to protect you if you do not explicitly grant patent rights, because I guarantee you IBM will find a way to find a patent in their massive collection of patents about everything under the sun to, to find, and they will litigate you. And they have entire divisions of the company that are just dedicated on chasing down and getting money, squeezing blood out of all of these companies that have anything that even looks like one of their patents. And there are a lot of other companies and corporate people that actually find value in that. This is the thing that makes me the saddest of all. The people who give IBM money value their, ba their behavior when they do this stuff. They actually think it's a valuable thing for them to go attack and destroy anybody who has any patent that even looks remotely close to what they have put in their huge, huge patents database. IBM is one of the few companies among the big ones uh, that has not bought into this, hey, we're going to release all our patents for free like Microsoft did, which is also a business ploy, by the way. That's a business ploy to destroy small companies because small companies, there's a great article on this, small companies, the only thing they have to compete on is their IP. Don't give your IP away. You cannot start a successful small company without some sort of intellectual property, period, in the, in the realm. So the bigger companies like IBM, they're following a different, not IBM, Microsoft, they're following a different thing. Since they've already got dominance in the industry, they're going to make they're going to pretend to be a big, a nice, big, happy player in the industry and say, oh, look at us. We gave all of our stuff away for free. They don't need it anymore. They've already established dominance. It's all the little people trying to break into the scene who don't want to give away. There's a, there's an article someplace. Don't give away your most valuable thing. If you if you want to be a company, then you need to hold on to that IP as tightly as you can and be you know, secretive with it. And then once you establish, um, you know, a position in the industry, wait to be bought out, somebody will buy you out to get your innovation and then they'll release it for free to everybody or they won't. Right. And they'll keep it internally. If, if you want to make money in tech, there's no, you have to do this. You can't, unless you're selling like a web service, like a Redis or something. If, if you want to make money in tech, you have to hold on to your IP. And that that that's just the way it goes it can't all be everybody innovates for free they got to feed their families so so but ibm has even then even they have not decided that, to do that they have never released any of their patents to the as far as i know i could be wrong please let me know in the comments um uh the advantages of apache over enterprise i uh, i've talked about that one a lot um i'm not a lawyer but i have done videos about the apache license several times um uh, you get a word for creating your first patent. Yeah, that's how you get to become a distinguished engineer. Uh, you started really young and didn't understand some of that at the time. Absolutely, Clutch. And and that's that's kind of what I'm trying to say. Uh, OpenShift with Nomad. Hope they are a separate entity. Um, I get the CEO departure now. Oh, the HashiCorp CEO left? Oh my God, I did not know that. The end. I look at Cloud APIs. We don't need Terraform. Actually, to tell you the truth, I don't. I really don't like Terraform. I don't. I, I started out liking it, but I, the more I got into it, the less I liked it. I didn't know IBM was still around. <laughs> yeah, Red Hat, no. Sad day. Explains a lot. Good move by IBM. <laughs> uh, the end is near, my dear. Uh, rip, too bad, insane. Uh, wonder if they order reverse license change, which means, no, they won't. Are you kidding me, Dan? The only reason they, the reason they changed the license is so they would buy them. Why would they reverse that? Which means OSS community has developed a bunch of good stuff for Tech Giant. Um, that's a tough one, man. 
there's a lot of good things that Red Hat has done even after they got purchased by IBM. Is it in spite of IBM or because of IBM? I do not know. Um, so, yeah. Uh, all right, folks. HCL is now ICL. <laughs> HCL is now ICL. How are they going to rebrand HCL? HashiCorp configuration language is now IBM configuration language. No. Required by IBM. Being able to mark the entire code base as a legacy. Oh, yeah. Anyway, I think that's enough ranting about this. Um, so, yeah, this is completely random. Uh, Ashcore joins IBM. Oh, God, why why is this so bright? Who the hell doesn't do dark mode? Kelsey, turn your dark mode on, dude. <laughs> That's all for this rant. Um, honestly, I haven't rant. I mean, I rant, but I haven't ranted about something that's got my blood boiling that much in a long time. So, welcome back to the old Rob, I guess, a little bit. Uh, I, I have to go to work now. Bye.